I am Bella Robinson, and I'm with the Rhode Island chapter of Coyote. Coyote stands for Call Off Your Old Tired Ethics. Um, I've been working, uh, researching the topic of trafficking for over five years, and I've been a sex worker for over 32 years. Last five years since 2009, I've been taking a look at what trafficking looks like in our state and in the United States. And what I found out by the Urban Justice Report in New York in 2014 that most of, the, most of the youth in the sex trade have entered the sex trade because they're throwaway kids, they're runaway, a lot of them are LGBT. They can't get the state to provide them housing or any other vital service. But it's really about anti-prostitution lobby. They, their goal is to abolish prostitution. It's an unrealistic goal. They're not interested in um, reducing violence. They're not interested in reducing poverty. These are the components that could reduce people in the sex trade. I don't think would ever totally abolish it. Um, but there's better things that we could put into practice that would be more realistic. Thank you so much for coming everyone. Welcome to Brave Start Training. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to identify victims of sex trafficking. Uh, at Bright Start, our goal is to create a community free from sexual assault, violence, and sex slavery. So we're trying to achieve this dream by hosting these workshops, thank you very much, uh, that will teach you how to look under the surface at the real world of human trafficking. Our actions respond to the needs of the community and the needs of the girls that we save. Now it's important to know that these girls could be anyone. They could be someone you know, they could be your daughter, they could be your student. That's why we're here today, because you could change a life with this knowledge that we want to give you. So I'm gonna be talking about a lot of different things, so absolutely feel free, if you have any questions, just raise your hand, I'll let you know. Okay, let's get started. So these girls are forced into a life of human trafficking by coercion or force. That's how we define human trafficking. Trafficking today is a very serious issue, as I'm sure we all know. That's why we're here. The legal definition of trafficking is if forced coercion or fraud is used, unless it's a minor. If a minor is involved, no forced coercion and fraud needs to be used. So minors can't consent. They're all labeled as victims. So the average age of girls who start in prostitution is 14. Oh, yeah? Yes? Actually, that's incorrect. So even the Polaris Project, which is another organization that claims to combat human trafficking, and where that statistic comes from, has taken that back since publishing. The actual age of entry, on average, is actually 17 to 19. Well, I don't know about that, but I know that of the, the girls that our, pro our organization works with, the average age is 14. Well, isn't that because Bright Start only takes girls that are 14 years old and younger? So there may be an average of girls' age of girls that you work with, but that number is not necessarily accurate for the national average. Well, I've only been working with Bright Start since December, so I really can't speak to the validity or accuracy of that. But thanks so much for the questions. Okay, moving on. So when I have to listen to these people, you know, I understand there's a lot of bad information out there, and you read things and you believe it. And there's a big difference between telling the public that the average age is 13 or 14 when it's really 17 to 25. It creates a lot more hysteria. These kids don't know that they're being taken advantage of. So a lot of times they might think they're doing it willingly, but we know that it really is rape and abuse. So most children involved in the sex trafficking industry didn't come from healthy backgrounds. As many as 96% of sex slaves were abused as children. A lot of the time, they think this treatment is normal because of how they grew up, but we can see that it looks a lot more like rape. They just don't, somehow, don't see it as such. Um, sorry, I'm just hearing a lot of assumptions about how these young people 
um, imagine their own situations and not a lot of engagement with them on their own terms. Um, so I'm just wondering what you think about the fact that 96% of kids involved in sex trafficking are sexually abused by people who they know and how they may not feel like they have a support system they can draw on from their immediate life and how they may feel kind of judged, frankly, by the information that you're putting on to them. No one's asking these kids why they've run away to start with, which I think is really problematic. What, what the services do right now is they want to put the victim in a blue dress and she tells her sad story and as soon as she's done telling you the horrific abuse, she has, they wrestle the microphone away so they can tell you about what their agenda is and they lose the voice um, of agency and the rescue becomes about them and not the person they're trying to help. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, I have a comment actually. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I feel like you've been interrupting a lot and all of us here today are here to learn from Bright Start, and we all really care about this training as activists in the community. So I think if you could be like a little less disruptive while we're trying to hear this presentation, it would be really helpful for everyone else in the room. The, the woman did offer to let us interrupt her if we had questions, or I wouldn't have, but I, I just wanted to shut it down every time you hear a statistic. It's really traumatic to, to listen to the same lies over and over again, especially when you know they're not rooted in any realistic solution. No solution is going to come out of this other than stigmatizing sex workers, promoting violence against them, and, and then we find out they're not even really providing for the youth like they claim they are. Okay. Sorry that ran a little bit over, guys. Thank you so much for coming. If you guys have any questions, I'll be standing up here. Thanks so much for coming. What a great time. Hopefully you can help these girls now. The stigma associated with sex work and trafficking is actually making things more dangerous for trafficking victims. So part of my research is to run around to all the service providers in Rhode Island, and other than the domestic violence shelter, no one is set up to take an adult vict a trafficking victim in. A lot of shelters won't even take sex workers in that show up and say, I just need a safe place to stay. Um, or they create so much hostility the women feel like they need to leave and go back to their abuser. So that's one of the things that I'm starting to do with some of the shelters is try to give them some sens sensitivity training on how to, to, to treat women coming in. And my thinking is if I want all women to be equal, I need to support the choices of all women whether I agree with those choices or not. So how I've learned to frame this is you standing up for the rights and human rights of sex workers does not mean that you approve of prostitution, does mean that you promote prostitution. You just understand that it's not okay to abuse this population of people and treat them as subhuman. So it always suggests you ask the person how you see yourself and how can we be of service to you? What is it we can do to help support you? What are your needs? Rather than me deciding what they are going to be for you.